You're up! Hey guys, and welcome back to Lost Bits, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. After several long years, the Cuphead Delicious Last Course DLC is finally released. And with my old Cuphead video being my most viewed video by far, you bet I was excited to dive into the new DLC and see if there was any more unused stuff kicking around. In this video, I'll be going over some more unused stuff that I didn't cover in my first video, as well as some new unused stuff that's found in the latest DLC update. So with that said, parry that like button below, it's time to find some more Cuphead Lost Bits. Alright, so before we get to the spicy new stuff from the DLC release, first I wanted to go over a few more unused things in the base game that I didn't in my first video. If you're just interested in the new DLC stuff, there should be timestamps in the video timeline below. Anyways, first up, there are numerous unused attacks and features for many of the bosses that were scrapped or had their graphics altered. So, starting with the smallest scrapped mechanic, the little jelly beans that walk during the fight against Baroness von Bonbon have a jumping move that was cut. Go, little jelly bean, I believe in you. Next, these were originally what Wally Warbles was planned to shoot out of his hand before they were changed to the bullets as seen in the final release. Honestly, these look kinda creepy with the whole beak thing on the front. Then next, for the fight against Calamaria, normally she only brings up either a large red or yellow fish, but it appears that there was planned to be one more color, blue. Now this unused bluefish variant can still be modded into the game, so we can actually see how it was planned to function. Similar to the other fish, this one was going to fire out a projectile, and these would spin around kind of like a propeller. The graphics for the projectile here still appear that they're placeholders, so I guess this attack must have been cut a bit earlier when developing this fight. Then for Jimmy the Great, for the second phase where you have to navigate through a bunch of the pillars, there's actually a scrapped attack for this phase which would have had the pillars actually shooting projectiles at you. These, coupled with the blade things, make this section incredibly difficult, so I'm sure these projectiles were deemed a bit overkill here. Oh yeah, and when loaded back into the game, these projectiles default to the Jareed heads we went over in my first video. Nice to see them back here. Then next, seemingly a whole scrapped boss character, in addition to Betty Beat or Beatrice Lutz, who was also scrapped from the root pack, apparently Peas were going to be another character type that was planned to be seen. Now unfortunately, unlike many of the other things here that can be loaded back into the game, outside of just some code referencing the peas, without any graphics or other leftovers, all we can really do is speculate as to what they would do. Then next, for Grim Matchstick, there are actually two attack things that were changed. The first of these is a meteor shot behavior from the first phase in which it would be shot completely horizontally. In the final version of this fight, the meteors always follow a wave-like path. Then secondly, although not technically unused, for Grim Matchstick, in the final phase, if you break open one of the fireball bubble things, it will split in four directions. But apparently, the actual intention for it is to only shoot out left and right, or up and down. And only due to apparently sloppy coding is why it ends up splitting in four like it does here. Then, for probably the biggest scrapped boss fight mechanic, although in the final release only the frogs, tigers, and bulls can be seen on the slot machine in the fight against Ribby and Croaks, there was actually a fourth outcome that was planned that got canned. Hidden amongst the graphics for the other animals is this devil of some sort, and yeah, it looks like this never made it past the placeholder graphic stage in development. Remnants of this outcome could still be found in the files and could also be loaded back in. When loaded in, the result is that the slot machine will not only start spitting out all three different kinds of platforms from the other results, but also a scrapped fourth gold one that also still sports a nice placeholder graphic on it. It doesn't really seem to have any effect, so it's unclear exactly what would have made it unique outside of the fact that this is the only platform that you can actually parry. Seeing as how this appears to be the most difficult outcome from that slot machine, I reckon this was supposed to be something that might have only been seen in the expert difficulty for this fight. And lastly, we got a scrapped mechanic from none other than... <clears throat> Plant Boy. Yeah, come on, it's not a Tetra Bay Cuphead video if I don't say Plant Boy. 
In addition to all the other seedlings that Cagney can shoot, there's one more that was scrapped which would spawn an unused blue version of the flying mini flower thing. Although you can partially mod it back into the game where you can see its unique death animation, apparently the blue version of this flower was planned to help the player by actually shooting projectiles back at Cagney instead. And as you've been seeing here, there are actually still various leftover graphics of this blue variant left over in the game. Now that's all for the unused boss mechanics, so now let's move on to talking about some unused graphics. First off, left over in the game are graphics for Cup House, which is an early version of the Elder Kettle House. The design of the house appears very similar with the single door, window, chimney, etc. But I guess the design was changed to how it's seen in the final, so the whole cup thing wasn't too on the nose. Next, there's this unused new graphic, as well as what looks to be a placeholder version of it listed as Wallard Map Equip New Icon. Yes, I didn't make this spelling mistake, that's actually how it's named in the files. Now, based on the name, it appears that these were meant to be used, I suppose, on the equip screen when the player got new super arts, weapons, or charms. Then, in addition to this pixel art block graphic that definitely looks way out of place in this game, there are actually three early mock-up screenshots. The first of these, known simply as Alignment Guide, features Plant Boy again. Although he looks more or less the same, the background here appears to be an early version of how it's seen in the final. Although the tree on the right and hill shape in the back look similar, there's no water in the background, no trees on the left, and the flowers in the foreground look different too. Then secondly for these mock-up screenshots, there are two featuring Pork Rind's shop. The first of these appears to be from an earlier point in development, as we can see placeholder art of various charms and weapon upgrades. There's a happy little early version of the heart charm, an early coffee tin, a flying shoe that might have been turned into the Perry sugar cubes, as well as early art for the spread shot and this bottle that doesn't really look like any weapon upgrade seen in the final, so it might have just been a placeholder for the regular pea shot or something. Furthermore, in addition to this image using very early art for confirming a selection as well as a placeholder graphic for the coins, the coffee here has a different effect than what's seen in the final. In the final version of Cuphead, it allows for the EX meter to automatically fill up, but here it's toted as an extra special blaster weapon for those that are environmentally conscious. So I guess before it was made into a passive charm, it might have been planned to be another weapon type. And the last nifty thing about this image is that unlike how the shop is seen in the final version, it doesn't have a blurry filter applied to it, so you can make out some more details in the background art better here. And now on to the second image of the shop, we can see it's a bit closer to how it's seen in the final. It's blurred, the coin graphics are updated, as are all of the item icons. That said, this image references another unused item, Ryan's Keister. Now I don't think this was actually a planned item, but rather just a joke placed in by the developers. Ryan here is very likely Ryan Moldenhauer, co-art director for this game, and I guess his keister can block any boss attacks and it's, uh, been around. Okay, and on that note, let's move on to something else. Next up, found in the game's localization files are references to several early names of various boss levels. Botanic Panic used to be Garden Panic, Clip Joint Calamity was Nightclub Catastrophe, Carnival Kerfuffle was Carnival Disruption or Carnival Chaos, Junkyard Jive was Junkyard Dance or Scrapyard Dance, and so forth. A lot of the names seem to be major improvements over these temporary ones, so I'm definitely glad they went back and updated them. And there's also one more unused level name, Confounded Circus. Now instead of this being an early boss name, this one actually appears to be an early name for either the Funhouse Frazzle or Funfair Fever running on stages of Inkwell Isle 2. And interestingly, although definitely unconfirmed, Confounded Circus also appears near a few references to the scrapped airship stages, so it's speculated that maybe there is some relation between the two. Next, something I didn't really get into my first video is some of the unused text that's found in Cuphead, and honestly, some of it's pretty good. First up, we got some placeholder text saying, Hi, my name is what, my name is who, and this is obviously a reference to the iconic song, My Name Is, by Eminem. 
Then next, there's a placeholder achievement text string simply saying, this is a somewhat long achievement name. I guess the developers were trying to see how the text would fit for achievements. And then the last unused text string that I think is worth mentioning here is this one. Three lines of text would look like this, don't you see? Much like the previous one, I guess they were using this to see how placement of a three-line string would appear. And then, last up for the pre-DLC stuff, there are several references in the game's code that suggest that a few of the overworld NPCs had some mechanics that were cut. A few of note are that Scholar the Lightbulb here would have had some sort of Blackjack minigame, Quadratus was also once planned to offer some minigame, and the Pirate Girl here would offer a side quest of sorts. In the game's code, there's a used all on Bruno set of dialogue that suggests that she would reward the player for beating Bruno with every weapon. Now, Bruno is thought to be an early name for Captain Brinybeard, as it might have been a derivative of Bluto or Brutus from Popeye, of which the captain's design definitely took some inspiration from. Now, what the rewards for doing all of these scrapped NPC events was to be is unknown. But I think it's definitely too bad that these were scrapped. They would have given the NPCs much more focus outside of just offering some small talk and the occasional free coins. Alright, now let's finally switch gears and talk about a whole bunch of stuff that's been seemingly cut from the new Delicious Last Course DLC update, at least for now. Now for the most part, unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess depends how you look at it, the developers actually cleaned up the game pretty well, removing a lot of previously unused content, and in general, they didn't leave much this time around outside of various references in the game's coding. So yeah, unfortunately not that many cool visuals this time around, but still lots of really cool stuff found in the code. Anyways, first up here for the DLC, we talked about some unused boss phases and such for the base game, but there are actually a few for the DLC boss fights as well. First are some unused attacks for Glumstone the Giant. In the coding, there are references to both a gnome leader, as well as some sort of camel attack. And the gnome leader actually isn't unused, as this thing is what the coding points to. This ulcer thing definitely doesn't look like a gnome, so perhaps before this was a thing, the plan was to fight the leader of all of these pesky gnomes here instead. And yeah, there's absolutely zero camel attacks that ever occur in this fight, so it seems like that was completely scrapped. There's also reference to a parry thermometer that was supposed to be seen inside the stomach phase too. It's also related to the stomach platforms here, so maybe it was some sort of original way of getting them all to respawn. Then for the fight against Miss Cowgirl here, there's reference to an unused T-Bone phase in the fight. Now sure, she does use an attack where she throws a juicy T-Bone steak at you, but this is seen in the meatball phase. So perhaps instead of turning into sausage, there might have been a planned phase or alternate secret phase where she would turn into a nice T-Bone steak instead. Unfortunately, there's not much else in the code for this phase, so all we can really do is speculate as to what it would have been. Then, also for Esther, there's reference to a scrapped UFO attack. Of course, UFOs are often portrayed abducting cows, so I guess this would have made some sense, and it appears that these UFOs would have functioned differently than those seen in the fight against Hilda Berg, as instead of shooting out a beam, they would have shot out bullets of some sort instead. Now next, let's talk about the King's Leap. And first, a bit of a fun fact. In the localization notes, there's an explanation as to why it's called the King's Leap. Apparently, this is the name of an old medieval chess move that became eventually known as castling. And yeah, we're at a castle, so it's like a hidden play on words. Pretty cool. Anyways, I touched on this a bit in my recent Found Bits video, but it seems that the King's Leap bosses may have been reworks from the airship levels that were cut from the base game. I already mentioned the similarities between the knight and Jelly the Octopus in that previous video. The airship crab fight was supposed to have the player parrying attacks back to damage it, kind of like the rook fight. And the airship stork also had some similarities to the knight too, in that you could only attack it when it would lower its head. And it's also believed that the stork's babies were reworked into the pawns in this first fight here. Then also for this area, in addition to the other four bosses that can be encountered in this floating castle, there is leftover coding that suggests that at some point in development, the king was planned to have his own boss fight as well. 
he would apparently have 40 HP, the fight would have had the player parrying a lever of some sort, and the king was to have three different attacks. Some sort of rat attack, a beam, as well as a full screen attack with no other details given. The queen fight was definitely awesome, but I think ending off this area by defeating the king would be really cool, so hopefully this is something they consider adding in a future update. And lastly for this castle area, there's reference to two old versions of the fight against the bishop, Old A and Old B. Now unfortunately, not much is left to give too much context to how these early versions were different, but with the Old B version, there are references to a birdie that could be parried to attack the boss. So it could be theorized that this too may have been an early version of the Rook fight where you had to parry back objects at the bishop to defeat it. Now next, sort of similar to the Flying Castle, there's actually some coding that was added to this game in the latest update for a currently unused Tower of Power area. In short, this appears to have been a boss rush mode, where you would have had to fight through a bunch of bosses and then the devil if you were to play it on regular or expert difficulty. The player would go against 1 to 3 different airplane bosses, and then, depending on the difficulty, 2 to 4 different king dice battles, and 3 other boss battles too. So you could end up fighting anywhere from 6 to 11 fights depending on your luck and difficulty level. Furthermore, there is reference to a slot machine for this mode, and basically, it seems that what weapons and charms you could use in the boss rush would be randomized and determined by this slot machine, which would use tokens. It's unclear exactly how one would obtain these tokens, but it's likely you could get more of them by completing a run in the boss rush mode. Additionally, these tokens are believed to have been used for an also scrapped game over screen for this mode, where the player would have 15 seconds to decide to use a token to continue or not, similar to many fighting arcade games. There's actually quite a bit of coding left for this mode, including more things for it like a scorecard, and it also looks like you could play through it as Miss Chalice without the cookie taking up the charm slot too. I don't know, there just seems to be a decent amount of work put into this Tower of Power, and I think this sounds like an awesome mode that would add even more replayability to Cuphead, so I'm really hoping this is something that eventually does get added back into the game. Speaking of arcade games, let's talk about Coin-Op Bop, one of the most well-known bits of content that was seemingly scrapped from the base game. Now, although I was pretty disappointed that this cut arcade wasn't a part of the new DLC update, surprisingly, coding for it is not only left over, but it seems to have been actually worked on since the last update, giving me more hope that it will one day get added back in. Now, for those that don't know, let's rewind a bit. Coin-Op Bop, or Lunar Williams as it's more properly listed as, is a scrapped running gun stage that was to feature several classic arcade games remade in the Cuphead engine, and would have had the player basically playing these games over Cuphead and Mugman's shoulders like this mock-up here. Well, in addition to several of the existing games that were planned here, like Sheriff and Aliens that's believed to be a rip-off of Space Invaders, Snake is actually a game that was added to this list in the most recent update. So yeah, it appears that at least some more work is being put into this mode. And not only this, but coding for the knockoff Frogger game was also changed for this update, and a new weapon type for the arcade game was also added, the Rocket P-Shot. To add to this, there's also a sound effect in the files that I believe goes unused titled World Map Hint Arcade that was very likely meant for the arcade level and it straight up just uses sound effects from the Donkey Kong arcade game. <laughs> Now, although this certainly doesn't confirm that the scrapped arcade level is coming back or anything, the fact that they not only didn't outright delete this stuff from the game like many of the other old unused things, and actually recently worked on it too, certainly gives me some hope. I definitely thought there weren't going to be any more updates for this game, and that this would be the last Cuphead video on my channel for a long while, but it looks like there may be some more content coming after all. Now next up, let's talk about some unused weapons, charms, as well as a super art that are still found left over partially in the game. 
Although these aren't left in a functional state like we saw with some of the others in previous updates, there are coding references to several unused weapons including Firecracker, Firecracker B, Accuracy, Splitter, as well as Pushback. The Firecracker weapons seem to be reworks of the Arc weapon I mentioned in my previous video, but instead of acting like a proximity mine, it instead would explode after a certain amount of time. Splitter would, as the name suggests, split after a while. Accuracy is again pretty self-explanatory as it would reward the player for having good accuracy. Basically, the more you would hit an enemy in a row without missing, the attack would get bigger, faster, and stronger too. And lastly, guess what? The unused pushback weapon is again pretty self-explanatory too, as it would simply push back enemies. It's thought that this wouldn't have an effect on the bosses since their positioning in a fight is so vital, so it was probably only useful in the running gun stages, which is probably why it was canned. Then next, much like the arcade stuff, an unused weapon I went over in my first video, Exploder, actually got buffed in the recent update. Not sure why they'd be tuning a weapon that isn't used, but hopefully this also hints at some plans to add it in the future. Next up, there are also references to two new but still unused charms, Float and Directional Dash. Float would seemingly make the player more floaty as it would reduce fall speed, and there's not really any coding left for Directional Dash, but based on the name, I'd assume this would allow the user to dash in any direction and not just left and right. And honestly, that sounds like it could have been a pretty useful charm, but still likely not as good as the Smoke Dash. And finally here, there's also an unused super art that was meant for Miss Chalice, simply known as Bounce Ball. Besides the name and some damage and speed values, there's not much more context for this super art in the coding. But seeing as how Miss Chalice's other two supers are slight alterations of those that Cuphead and Mugman use, I'm assuming it might have been planned to be similar to Cuphead and Mugman's giant ghost super art, but instead of just flying around, Miss Chalice would instead bounce. Ultimately though, I think Miss Chalice's third super art that she did end up getting is still pretty cool. Although we saw a few more NPCs added to the game in the newest aisle, there are actually references to four more in the game's code that were meant for this aisle but are never seen. There's reference to a fourth place contestant that I guess would have had something to do with these three, perhaps adding a fourth hint for the tombstone puzzle, as well as a judge NPC for them as well that I guess determined their ranking. Next, there's reference to an accomplishment mole. Although most of its data, including how it was meant to be triggered, seems to have been removed, based on the name, it sounds like maybe it would have had something to do with the game's achievements. And finally, there's not only references to, but an actual graphic for a Chalice Fan A. Now Chalice Fan B is the cactus girl that's seen here sitting by the fireplace who gives you hints to unlock the secret gold Miss Chalice reward. So it seems like this fella was probably an early version of that character. Now next, moving away from just leftover coding, let's get more visually impressive and talk about some unused graphics that were added in this update. First up, there are some leftover early unfinished sketches of Mortimer Freeze, as well as some early sketches of the cups blinking. Since these are so large, it's likely that these were animation tests for the cutscenes. Then we got a set of what looks like early, less polished sketches of the various animated objects seen on the new DLC aisle. As you can see, yeah, they definitely aren't as finished as how they look in the final release. And lastly for the unused graphics, probably the most interesting I think are 25 unused flower graphics, one unique one for each major boss fight in the game. Although there doesn't appear to be any additional coding for these flowers left in the game, since there's one flower for each boss fight, my speculation is that these were part of an early plan where these flowers would appear here near the Cactus Girl once each boss was defeated by Ms. Chalice before being changed to just notches in the sand. Honestly, I think these would have looked much better and more memorable, and it would have been nice to see all the unique flowers for all the different bosses. But I suppose maybe loading in up to 25 more objects on the world map might have been deemed a bit too excessive. And now, last up for this video, I don't think I actually mentioned it in my previous videos, but the debug menu that's been around since release is actually still kicking around, and actually has been updated to accommodate the new bosses and weapons. 
I had to tinker with it a bit to actually get it working, but it works just like it used to and lets us quickly set up a battle with any boss in the game with any weapons you'd like. On the flip side though, unfortunately, many of the once unused bosses and weapons that you could access through this menu no longer work, and can even softlock the game. So, although many of the unused things like Robo Squidward, the light, and the unused weapons are still listed here, yeah, unfortunately, all their assets were removed from the game, so these no longer function. Furthermore, here we can also see that there are some new unused maps that have been added. There is a level test as well as level flying test. Once again, unfortunately, as much as I would absolutely love to see what these unused stages were, just like the other unused bosses, their functionality too appears to have been removed from this version of the game. Although this debug menu no longer lets us access a bunch of cool unused content, it's still really nifty for setting up fights quickly without having to traverse all over the overworld. And my friends, that'll wrap things up for Cuphead, at least for now. Like I said, I thought this update would be the last, but there definitely seems to be some hints suggesting that we may see some more content for this game in the future. So yeah, keep those fingers crossed. Also, I'd love to give a big shout out to Nervatel, Mala, and Gallantark for being a huge help with making this video possible. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, be sure to check out some of my other Lost Bits and consider subscribing to find your way back in the future. And as always, thank you so much for stopping by, and I will see you in a bit.